Ja, dann herzlich willkommen zu unserem Forum Verkehr zentral für die Welcome to this forum Traffic for Social Justice and Climate Justice. It's so nice to have you all here on this Saturday morning and I am Manuela Kopp. I'm in the Attack Deutschland group. I'm with the campaign Einfach umsteigen Climate Justice for All and I work for the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation in Belgium. So we will have one contribution in French. If you don't understand French, please go get a pair of headset. So well, we heard Birgit Mankopf and yesterday as well, we may, her may declare that if we keep going like that with capitalism, with our system, then our ecosystems will collapse. We don't have much time left to initiate change. And the traffic sector is one of the most important sectors. It creates 25% of all greenhouse gas emissions uh, in the EU. The traffic sector is also the sector where the emissions have not decreased since the 90s, but they keep increasing. Yesterday, during the strategy debate, it was made clear that we have to leave market politics, that we cannot just paint capitalism green, but we have to really talk about alternatives. And we'll have to take a look around and with whom can we cooperate, who are our partners. Um, the demands of the climate movements are clear, but nothing has happened. Uh, something has happened, for example, the nine euro ticket in Germany, that has been a success, and we could see how huge the need for tra uh, transport is and how important the right for mobility is, because that means being part of society. The 9 euro ticket also showed how weak the infrastructure is um, in terms of rail traffic, but also with the working conditions for those people working there. So we have to talk about uh, what we're going to do with the car industry. It's a very important industry in the EU and in Germany. In Germany, it's 800,000 jobs uh, directly in the car industry, but there are also indirectly connected jobs. Um, so then in total, that would be 2.3 million jobs. So we can't just say, well, let's just downsize, but we have to find real alternatives. And that's what we want to talk about. I'm really happy to have such an excellent panel today. So first we have Achim Haya. He was really nice and replaced Stefan Kuhl because he was not able to make it. He wanted to come from Hamburg with the train and his uh, locomotive was damaged, unfortunately. But that is no problem because Achim is a great replacement. He has been active in the campaign Klimagerechtigkeit für alle for many years. And he will uh, open the panel with his speech. Then we have Friederike Bittex, she's also active uh, in Attack Einfach Umsteigen. She's from Duisburg. Then we have Emmanuel Bigot, she's French. And she made all the way. She made it all the way from France. She's in the international labor organization Sud Rail, and she's also active in health at the workplace. Sud Rail is also part of the Association Solidaire. And then we have uh, Pierre Coco. He's from the IG Metal. He works in the Department of Basic Questions and Society Politics. And that's also the um, the way we're going to hear the speeches. Everyone will speak for 10 minutes and afterwards I will ask you to contribute yourself. So we'll have a bit of an interactive forum here uh, because we always have so many experts in the audience, usually just as many as on the panel. So uh, feel free to contribute. We have two microphones on the left over there. Um, so if you want to speak, please queue over there. I've also been asked to say the following. The campaign group um, has uh, 
launched a campaign, nine euro tickets keep going because the nine euro ticket will stop by the end of August. And uh, Thomas has the list for uh, collecting signatures and you're welcome to sign and to contribute and to spread the word. We cannot understand that. So I will pass the list for the signatures and next Saturday we'll have an action day to the topic of a uh, nine euro ticket. Let's keep going. It would be really nice if you could help. We have some spare material. We have these signs. If you're heading home by train tomorrow, please take that with you. We'll have a few stickers, some flyers. Take all of that and take a look around. Um, if you're free on the 27th, please join us. Thank you, Thomas. Achim, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. It's really nice to have me. It's a bit, it was a bit sudden. I was at breakfast when I got the message. I replaced Stefan. He is the coordinator for the working circle um, mobility in the Rosa Luxemburg Association. He started the project lane change in the car industry. And he was with the VSA. There's also a little movie on that topic. But uh, it seems to be gone, the flyers. Uh, feel free to check out the website of the Rosa Luxemburg Association. Um, Stefan also uh, held a survey. I used to work for a steel industry which made steel for the car industry. And that was also hit by the change in mobility. Stefan and I tried to build up something in Bremen. Um, we tried to work with someone from Mercedes and we were able to open up a discussion with her. As attack we have the simple motto public transport instead of cars. And that is what we need to do to stop climate collapse. A lot has to be done in public traffic. We have to reduce emissions and there is a basic formula and we could say until 2030 public transport has to be doubled and car traffic has to be halved at least. And so we will hear about widening public transport. I'm going to focus on the car industry. So the big question is what happens with those who are currently working in the car industry? So 1.5 million people. Um, and if you go through the city and see so many cars and you see how many people live from the car industry, so it's that's a lot of people. There are calculations in one of the books. There are alternatives. Um, one of them could be the mobility industry we want to build up. So rail traffic, public transport, if we double that, then we need many new buses and trains. We need new infrastructure. And we, of course, need employees who can operate this public transport. And according to these con con calculations, it could work out that those 
whose jobs have been taken could find new employment in the mobility industry. But these are just calculations, they depend on different parameters. But to me it's important because, of course, there is fear. What's going to happen with my job? That is real fear. And Stefan Krüde in his survey uh, f with uh, employees in the car industry found out that employees don't want to work with cars only. Of course, they're a bit proud on their work, but they have the technical abilities for other work, purposeful work, and they understand that. So I'm curious on to what Pierre's going to say it as a member of the IG Metal. In the IG Metal, people believe that e-mobility can solve all our problems. Some people seem to believe that that's the way out of the crisis. But the e-car does not solve all our problems due to many reasons. Um, among other reasons, uh, if we count on renewable energies as a society, then a lot of people will be using this e-electricity. Um, so if everyone just drives around and uses a lot of power, this will be um, against our goals. So just having 50 million cars being transformed into e-cars, this is not going to work. So how can we continue We have had debates in different companies with certain colleagues, with counselors. We have to say there's a lot to do. There are certain ideas to head into the direction of institutionalizing there are transformation councils so if we talk about reducing car industry then we also talk about transforming the car industry into a more sustainable model there's the idea of transformation councils so it's not only a problem of those working in the car industry. If you want to build up a society, a democratic society where people have a say what is going to produce, where it's produced, then we need a large democratic civil society that contributes. So also in the different regions, everything is different how can we involve the different actors locally uh, in regions where there's a lot of car industry how we, can we discuss all together how can we manage uh, to achieve this transformation so that's the idea of transformation councils there are different actors in society and who work towards this transformation. Um, so that's what I was going to say. I'm sure the rest will be mentioned during the discussion. Uh, all other questions and problems. Thank you. Thank you, Achim.
thank you for explaining up to which degree jobs can be created in an alternative mobility. And thank you for mentioning democracy, because without demo democratic participants, we will not achieve our goals. So now I'd like to hand the microphone over to Federica Bittix. Thank you. It's already been mentioned. I'm an activist from Duisburg. I'm particularly interested in the topic of mobility. How can we ha keep the population mobile? Ever since ATTAC was founded in 89, it's fought for education in society and in the media as well. ATTAC used to be um, uh, an acronym f against a certain tax, but it's also meant to symbolize the anti-attack. The narratives we have is the thought that we need economic growth and we need a large speculative financial market in order to have funds or we need intense competition between countries and regions to have good companies and jobs. For TAG, it's especially important to show actions and to portray information as well, to show the link between climate change, trade, international trade, but as well as well migration, flight and war, as well as showing the link between international actions and climate change. Like this, we want to use the skills and the competencies of everyone to show that we can have a different world. This is not about naive and a utopia. Our motto is another world is possible and we want a different approach. We want regulations that can protect the environment and the planet for all of us. We want the power of everyone to be around. If we have big movements, we can have change and encouragement. And we see potential there with mass movements. Many people know how absurd and sick our current economic system is, but they still lack the knowledge how close the possibility for change is. When we look at mobility, we see a close connection between social justice and climate protection. We can not only save the environment and the climate, we can also see redistribution of wealth to everyone. We see a small elite lose a lot of money, influence and power. And with, with wealth, I mean health, I mean living and I mean participation in society. And from that, we see a benefit for everyone to increase their wealth because we see an empowerment for people. People that have more power there would also fight for a more democratic society. So this is not about losing out, but rather taking part and participating. So when we look at this mobility change and this transformation that Attack is also working with, I really also want to elaborate on this thought. So what am I talking about? And what can we win and gain from this change in transportation? If we would switch and shift from individual car use up to railways and public transport, then we can have more space for bike lanes, for footpaths, and we can have more opportunities for everyone, less noise pollution, n less pollution in itself, less stress, more safety, more security. Like this, we can also have people have access to many things. We would see an increased quality of life. 
and cities would become more attractive. So how can we get away from this current society where cars play a central role? We need to be aware of these different structures that are at play on a national but also on an international level. We need to be daring to make this transformation. So we need to stop the building of further roads. And we need to invest in infrastructure to get more railways and to more public transport. We need fair working conditions for everyone there. We should not be limited in financial resources. Of course, there will be conflicts in this. Because a lot of our industry is also correlated and bound to this way of transport. Everyone is in the automotive or people are working in airports. But right now, as a society, we have many losses because of, because of crises. And we have struggles in our societies. And we need to make a decision now. Initially, we can stop the loss of jobs because we see profits being gained in fossil fuel energy but we need to empower our workers as well. We need to overthink our industries right now and we need to stop thinking of management and stakeholders, but we need to focus on employees. There's another way of also getting these employees because the construction of a climate-friendly public transport gives opportunities to so many people that may have lost their jobs in the past. And here we need new training, job training and opportunities and all age levels and with all level of skills to get these workers back. Current, I also want to talk about the financial possibilities. If we would stop using subsidies and if we would stop supporting traffic we could use that financial the financial differences and we can in we can use this in investment we see an increased arm spending that we could also use for something else we could change the debts that we have and use the financial means that we have for a climate-friendly transport and society. I already showed what we could achieve with this mobility transformation. But a very important question that we need to ask ourselves is how can we get society behind us? How can we mobilize them? People as social people <laughs> and Organisms are willing to take risks if they see that change can happen and the benefits outweigh the risks. This can be used to get this mobility transformation on hand. But we also need to understand when people are not willing to join this movement. So what, what we see is if people do not practice what we preach is that people are not willing to get behind those movements. We need to get people involved in decision making and new strategies. Of course nobody wants to lose their jobs and have insecurity. If we do not see the benefits outweigh the risk for society at a large. We don't want people to become victims of that change and to be individually and privately affected. Attack sees itself as part 
of the climate movement that will also identify concrete steps to get a mass movement going. If a concrete step towards climate protection becomes visible to as many people as possible and feels good as well, then we can also see an indication that many will be more willing to participate in this change and we see more risk-taking happening. The climate movement should focus less on theoretical justifications of why structural change is necessary, but rather more by showing examples and by showing these concrete goals. And we see that this transport change is exactly that. We want to use the resources that are left. We want to gain resources back that are used up by individual traffic right now. Every protected forest and every road project that is shut down is a potential. And every railroad that is reopened and every city that is without, without cars, every speed limit, every bicycle lane is a gain. And people can see that we can reverse this tendency and this robbery from society because we stand up finally. The campaign that is called Einfach Umsteigen is working together with changing cities and other movements. We have launched the initiative of continuing the nine euro ticket in Germany. The nine euro ticket that we've had since June for three months in Germany is meant to be extended. Expanded. We want to expand the infrastructure in the railway and public transport all over. According to my information, we have 14,000 signatures and it, it may have increased by now. But we want to get the public support behind us once more, which we can see by the purchase of a nine euro ticket, for example, to see as an, a window of opportunity to have better public transport for everyone. Thank you very much. Ja, vielen Dank, Friederike, und danke auch, dass du äh, so konkret... Thank you, Frederike, and thank you for mentioning the nine euro ticket as a window of opportunity. And thank you for showing us how important trust is with the strategies we are using. So I am looking forward to handing over the floor to Emmanuelle from France. She's from the Sud Rail Workers Union, because we always ha also have to talk about international building up of um, rail traffic and Germany and France as neighbor states should work together. So I'm going to start a bit by speaking German and then switch to French. I am Emmanuel Pico. I'm from Paris. I'm a railway worker. I work at the Paris East railway station. I'm also a um, delegate for the workers and now I'm going to switch to French. The liberal politics harm, do a lot of harm. Humans, environment and the society. In France, the SOD Rail Association organizes the rail traffic workers so we can manage the challenges of this transformation. We also want to explain, to share and to present our solutions and in terms of a union. The Sud Rail is a union in the rail and we are also fighting with different organizations, different unions, for example, for the Union for Air Traffic. Our goal is to coordinate the fights. And 
we are living the competition we don't want that our goal is a central challenge for our society public um, the government has preferred streets for the last few decades but we have rivers and we should use all of the possible um, available traffic ways. Uh, decisions against environment have been facilitated with uh, by uh, the EU and common goods were forgotten. Uh, through introducing competition, the gr market gains were increased. In the last 30 years, roads in France have benefited from 351 billion euros of infrastructure investment. That is two-thirds of what was spent on transport. Trains had to make do with 18%. In Europe, there, were, there are 80,000 kilometers of autobahn. Between 1995 and 2005, the length of the EU autobahn network was increased by 20%. Um, the public has to pay for these decisions. Uh, by increasing uh, the road traffic, we will also have to combat pollution and noise pollution. And air pollution due to fossil energy have increased. So due in, in 1973, 30% of the pollution was due to pollution, uh, road pollution. And 2012, it's 70%. Uh, the contribution of rail traffic is very small because it only consumes 1.7% of the total energy in transport. So it, it's 10% of total traffic. In France it's 80% of all the uh, roads are responsible for 82% of all the traffic. Road transport accounted for 91.7% of greenhouse gas emissions in 2012, trains only 0.4%. That is why SED Rail advocates for a different modal split in favor of waterways. It's about paying people working in the transport sector fairly. And that is why we need subsidies in a European framework. I'm sorry. So how are we going to do that? We advocate a framework of responsibility with the social movements and the collectives and we need another management of energy management of railways through workers um, and public transport can be um, converted to for self-governing rail traffic SD rail demands uh, ma self-governing management and representation in the councils we need to have elections of users as well as employees and these people need to be able to work their mandate. The organization of an integrated company is essential for railroads. Uh, 
also for traffic safety and long-term investments. If we have more companies a bit on tenders, we can stop social dumping. But we need to have uh, better salaries and working conditions living up to the standards. In Italy, the National Railway Tariff Contract has, is only valid for the national uh, railway company. In Germany, the government wants to separate the Deutsche Bahn, Netz AG and Service AG. The network Bahn für Alle analyzes this development in connection with the liberalization. Separating them would make it easier to sell daughter companies. Um, Karl Wasmuth wrote separation and liberalization are the drivers of privatization. As the examples of railroads in other countries as well as in other sectors show, if the federal government now largely separates the infrastructure company from Deutsche Bahn, all those who want to invest money in rail operators will be happy. Without the debt and the obligation to maintain the rail network, big profits can be made on busy routes. However, rail traffic as a whole would suffer. The SOD Rail Federation shares this analysis. The railroads uh, are not enough in France. There are debts uh, that were taken up by the government in 2018. This year, the SOD demanded 100 million euros to prepare for the climate change and to react to it. So now, um, uh, Faradou mentioned the 86 million euros that were invested in Germany. The government declined this suggestion. In Europe, since 1991, the railway packages have attacked the public railroad company and the modus vivendi. The railroads are subject to geography more than any other industry. Railroad costs are not the same in the mountains as in the lowlands. Only through cooperation and solidarity between the railroads we can absorb these differences. Since 1991, all government policies in France are under the guise of development of the railroads um, and they promoted liberalism. This led to a decrease in the number of employees of the railroads, social regression for the rail workers and an increase in the number of subcontractors. In France, as well as in Spain, this policy has led to a decrease in rail services and traffic. In France, freight traffic has been destroyed by capitalists. Vehicles, personnel, um, rails, they have been ad abandoned. With the effect that France is being deindustrialized. Um, in France, the railway workers have fought um, across different sectors and in union with other unions and they have slowed down liberalism but that was not enough. Despite the attention we have spent on sharing our analysis on the components of transport and we ask for a change of logic and yet the uh, transport is not has, is not being paid enough attention so we need to raise awareness through social movements to all who are interested in it and that is what we want to do today
Yeah, vielen Dank, Emanuel. Thank you, Emanuel. Thank you for also mentioning the consequences of privatization. You mentioned Spain, you mentioned Italy, and we know it in Germany as well. Thank you for that perspective. And I am looking forward to pass the floor to Pierre Coucou from the Workers' Union IG Metal. There are several points I want to elaborate on, but I want to do my presentation first. Um, us as a union, the IG Metal, I think most of you know about us, but who are we, how many numbers, how many members do we have in 2022? We have members in more than 18,000 companies in the country. We are part in the mobility sector, in the automotive industry. Regarding the amount of employees in the automotive industry, we had 832 employees, and now we have around seven. 186,000 employees there. 2019, 4.67 million cars have been produced. We had 3.1 million cars in 2021. We also have workers in railway, not necessarily only Deutsche Bahn, but also in other industry in 2021, we had 53,000 employees about, and they are the only industry that actually had an increase in workers of 1.3% approximately. Then we also have the aeronautics industry. We have decreased numbers there to 72,000 employees in maritime. We had 19,000 employees and have seen a decrease in 5.6% of numbers. Although the construction of ships is especially interesting when it comes to the transformation of mobility right now. Those are just a couple of numbers. So to come to speak of the automotive industry, I brought some pictures. We see four tendencies in the automotive sphere. On the one hand, we're talking about climate change, climate crisis. We know we have to protect the climate. I think all of us agree there's no difference to where these people work. Everyone wants to have a good future, no matter where you work, for you, yourself, your family and your children as well. Of course, decarbonization is important as well. It would not have been as prominent if we would not have this climate crisis, but it's relevant to talk about it because there is pressure behind it. Second point or the second trend is the globalization. And at first we th thought that was the only the only way forward is globalization. And then we had COVID hit. Then we had China lock down their transport. And we had a breakdown of global supply chains. Lately, we had Russia invade Ukraine and therefore the war that ensued. Apart from the tragedy on a humanitarian level, we also have supply chains shut down or inhibited them at least. So we see the globalization that we've had up until 2020. We will not see this trend continue. The third trend that I've seen or we've seen is the digitalization. Of course, this plays a big role in the automotive industry. So we need to find new ways of making money. We have we may think that software gains in importance more than hardware does, and we can see a reconstruction there and restructuring as well, especially when it comes to employees as well. The fourth one may drown out a little 
but we do believe that this transformation will be more important, and that is the demographic. Germany is aging, and we have less employees. So where do we want to get the workers from? These young workers that are fighting for the transformation, how can we make sure they remain, and how can we make sure that the workers that we have right now will be treated fairly and justly when they age? And I guess this will be something that we will have to talk about in the future. We see these trends and they influence the industry, the way we work. Initially, you may think it's not very sustainable and it's probably also pollutant, pollution. And can we lose it? Should we lose it? Is a question we might ask. I. I haven't really asked that question here yet. I don't think we should keep it as that because something that is important is we need industry, we need development in Germany also to find renewable energy and to find sustainable ways of living in this transformation because the industry can contribute and we need time for that, of course. The third point, German industry also helps in um, the creation of wealth and prosperity. So if our industry is inhibited by crises and the consequences that follows for the social justice system that we have is pretty intimidating. And these are not just some or any jobs, but these are jobs that are regulated, we have tariffs, we have wage agreements, usually we have 35-hour working weeks. So these jobs need to be transferred maybe to other industries or other sectors, which is difficult. I mean, of course, we would like to do it easily and it would be great the way we imagine it to be. And the last point I would like to make is the health protection and health safety and work safety is also managed quite well, which is not the case in every other sphere in Germany. We see many challenges for the IG metal, like I said with the four trends. What are we going to do? And that is an interesting point. On a national level, and on an, in a government level, we want to represent the interests of our employees and we want them represented. One point I'd like to make, transformation happens in regions, locally and in regional structures. And we need to have more influence through networking. And we need to get companies together and I will touch upon that later. Then when it comes to e-mobility, we find this it's an interesting concept, but we need to increase the um, power stations that we have in Germany. We see it as a way into the future, but we need to invest there. When it comes to recycling, when it comes to hydrogen power, when it comes to batteries and charging mechanisms, we need to research more, we need to work there more. We know that the automotive industry gets a lot of investments and we have transformation networks that are also financed through this. The idea is that we get people together from different spheres that work on transformation. We have organizations and we have individuals, we have local governments, we have unions come together and workers and investments, people as well that come together, but I can talk about that later. This, these transformation networks that we have started in January exist. We have 27 of them in different regions, regions that are shaped by the mobility infra uh, industries. Sorry, They're picking up the work right now. The idea is 
not to support big companies, but the idea is to support small and medium-sized enterprises where we also see workers. And we want to support them in a way where if they don't have the financial needs to find future so solutions for the future, then we want to support them. At the same time, we also want to get the academia involved, universities involved, and research involved. So we also want to increase and improve qualification of skilled labor as well. And so we find real solutions for this transformation on a local level. Then we look at the level of companies and enterprises, and we have We have um, future um, trade agreements and we want a, f a fair framework for everyone. We have seen in the past that we have structures repeat themselves and we had managers that would come up to us and they said we need to have different solutions because we cannot keep these collective bargaining agreements up to par at the moment. So sometimes if necessary we will, we will move away from these agreements but when the crisis is over then we will also return to our agreements and we will also get the money more. But this way, we saw a future for the companies and a future for the employees as well. So wherever we had a strategic crisis or a strategy crisis, then we had um, the work council come together who would approach the management and we would say, hey, we, we fear for the future and we fear for for um, the future of how we would also manage to continue and ideally we would have someone sit down and say that they are willing to talk and that we would find a solution together and cooperate and based on that we would develop a process to make a future collective agreement once more and we would implement strategies and implement training as well to have groups come together to develop new products as well. This is the approach that we've had in the past for the couple of years and that we continue to have, especially when it comes to small and medium-sized enterprises, to also make sure that employment will be upheld. I think we're all right when it comes to scheduling. I want to leave it at that. I have some points that are relevant for the discussion later and I know that we will have a discussion later with members as well. Thank you very much for listening so far. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you for telling us about the challenges that the employees in the automotive industries have. Thank you for showing us what successes you've had when it comes to future collective agreements and funds as well as when it comes to participation within companies, which is, of course, always something that we can improve on. We've heard from employees in the automotive industry. We heard how the situation is like in France. We've heard about alliances that are being formed. We've heard it from a German perspective when we were talking about the nine euro ticket and the strategy from attack. I would like to open the floor for discussions, questions and commentaries. If you would please come up to the mic so that we can hear you. We have five people raising their hands. So we'll start with five maybe. And then I would also have us answer your questions and react. Maybe you can keep it short and simple, maybe two minutes tops. My name is Dagmar Kleine. I'm from Cologne and attack Cologne as well. I have two questions. I read 
that the production of e-cars, what the automotive industry is focusing on, will, if we implement it in the next 10 to 20 years, will have lost two-thirds of all workspaces because we will see a decline in these workspaces, which is the opposite of what we said, talking about the conversion of increasing public transport, at least then we would keep these workspaces. But why is it so difficult to talk about employees? Why do we hear about work councils all the time? If we hear about conversions all the time in the direction of e-mobility, second question is, has someone actually done the numbers? If we listen to what the automotive industry says and the, the, the numbers that everyone says about selling these cars, when we talk about e-mobility, there are cars that have a bigger need for cars, like China, for example. What amount of renewable energy would we need on a worldwide scale? If this kind of transformation and mobility would happen, which does not have a future, in my opinion, when we talk about e-cars, how much renewable energy would we need? We have not talked about lithium batteries and cobalt so far, which would then also be a strain on the global south. Thanks. I hope the microphone's on. I want to point out something else, maybe away from conversion, but adjusting also to the question of batteries, lithium, and cobalt. Something that I was missing is decreasing mobility maybe, and but also planning cities in a different way. We need different urban planning where living, working, and free time will work. Well, the question is, how will companies continue? Will they be privately capitalized enterprises? Or will companies also create apartments maybe for people working? So this mobility question is also a question of city planning. And it's not the solution how Menchen Gladbach did it of just creating more bike lanes. But the question is, does my private life and my job life work together? And is my job local? My name, I missed it, is Markus Breiter. Thank you very much. Bitte schön. I'm going to speak French. There is a sector that wasn't talked about a lot, air traffic. It's an important sector and it has a big influence on climate. Scientific research has shown that almost 60% of air pollution, um, of uh, greenhouse gas emissions come from air traffic, so it has a big influence on the climate. So two important questions. On first, what are the transportation needs in air traffic and how have they developed in the last 30 years? For example, we have uh, tourism, and we have to ask ourselves the questions uh, if short stays, uh, how we think about those. Second question, the question of inequality in access to traffic, especially air traffic, because air traffic is used a lot. And we could ask ourselves 
should we have private air traffic, private jets? In general, it's a question of the means of transport, of air traffic. It's always a question of jobs, of uh, sectors that grow, that shrink, um, air traffic, car industry. Also the question of developing more sustainable means of transport. We need rail traffic, ferries, we need more workers in those sectors. You all um, look closer into these questions in your line of work, but I think there should be national or at least regional regulations that also um, subsidize education of workers. Thank you. I'm Margarita Steinrette, together with Stefan. We are in the Attack Bundes AG Arbeit. I have a question. It follows up to two of my previous speakers. I have a question to um, the colleague from IG Metall. So first, concretely, are there ideas in IG Metall for concrete uh, companies for example, uh, Mercedes Bremen, that's what I come from. Are there ideas how you can, instead uh, instead of building Mercedes cars, uh, that you also could build uh, Mercedes railways? And in terms of, uh, also in terms of uh, participation of working people. So, how far do these ideas go? Second thing, the question to not only have a replacement of um, combustion motors, but to also have a, a reduction of uh, industries that industries that are harmful to the climate, for example, metal. So, if we just want to keep the Paris Agreement, we cannot keep producing on the same level. Even if we change uh, steel production onto uh, hydrogen. And I wonder, do you ask yourself this question? Do you have offensive strategies to put that into action? So, for example, I've heard about uh, transformation short-time work. That would be an idea to reduce working time and to reduce production and to still distribute that justly. I'd be interested in that. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more question. And then we'll go back to the panel and then it's back to you. Is that okay? Um, we can't have so many audience contributions at once because otherwise there will be too much for the panelists. I'm going to speak German. I'm Manuel. I'm from the network Stay Granite. I'd also like to talk about air traffic. I have a question. Uh, also, this ecological realism that the, my colleague talked about and environment, um, that hasn't been talked about enough. Only two, three sentences. Uh, in Germany, we use three times as much as would be ecological in terms of material, biomass, fossil energy, so that is by how much we have to reduce, uh, also with carbon dioxide. So, so if I listen to our colleague from the Union, I have no idea how you would get, um, how we would achieve the planetary limits. 
uh, also in air traffic, we have these alternative fuelings. But for air traffic only, we would need so much more. So my question is, what does the Union do to cope with the limits our planets can offer? And I would love to hear more about air traffic. Uh, at 2 p.m. there is an open stage, an open space by us if you want to join, because what we need right now are strong alternatives that are going to be accepted by the people. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to give the panelists the opportunity to react and then we'll go back to the audience. Okay, the question about the role of companies and also if it's possible with the current strategies to cope with the planetary limits. We believe that that is not possible with the car industries. Volkswagen still wants to sell more than 50%. There are regulations that we could, that these harmful cars will be banned, those with more than three liters and a certain size. So the question of regulations in traffic, there are other aspects as well. It's absolutely perverted that there is no speed limit in this situation. So we need regulation and we have to force car industries to adhere to certain standards, but this will not be enough. The car industry also have uh, still continue with their lobbyism that autobahns and freeways keep being built and this power has to be stopped. Second point, Pierre mentioned that the salary in the car industry is rather elevated and as a union they have to make sure that the material interests of the workers uh, remain secured. So these people don't want to work for half of their salary, that's clear. When uh, as ATTAC we worked together with others in 2020, so two years ago, and we fought for the conditions in public transport will be improved, that we have better working conditions, better salaries, um, better working conditions in terms of night shifts and so on. So if we can achieve more here and if we can keep cooperating with unions that and then we can make sure that this wage gap so people working in tra public transport earn about two-thirds of what people in the car industry earn if we can close this gap then people are more willing to change from the car industry into another industry. And um, if we take a look at the rail industry, there are collective contracts and they are similar to those in the car industry, but also structural poli political decisions were made. So some Uh, companies left when we have to get them back. And we also have to ask ourselves the question, how can we decrease the jobs in the car industry? 
And every day we hear, hear that there's a lack of employees in all kinds of sectors. If we uh, increase heat pumps, then we need much more people to install those. And in the car industry, this question is not the same. Thank you. Okay, I want to talk about two points. Uh, one is air traffic. That is correct. It hasn't been talked about as much in detail as the others. I want to mention the initiative by the Kampagne Einfach Umsteigen, together with other actors. Um, it's called Trains Instead of Planes. Uh, also about the ban of short distance flights, for example. This is an example where you could limit effects by regulations. Uh, yes, there is unequal access to air traffic. That is just in general a topic of social justice. Of course, flights should become a luxury, but at the same time, income should be distributed more justly. Uh, the other point about air traffic, unfortunately, there are predictions that uh, predict an increase of freight air traffic. Uh, so it's also about this big topic of this immensely big transport sector and to have it reduced. This leads me to the next topic. Um, someone said quite correctly that mobility should be avoided or reduced and that's what we need. So in total we have to change this discourse in economy. We need production that meets needs and, and that has been talked about in all the sectors. You can't just keep producing stuff just to keep jobs or to expand jobs. So I think the key to uh, needs-based production is regulation. We need to protect our resources, public investment, for example, uh, into public transport, but also having communal economy transforming into more sustainable economy. Uh, there is one measure I can think of on the top of my head. For example, you could only pay for pu public transport tickets whenever you come to an event, but that's just an example. So one important point, economic democracy. There are a few great angles that are already being looked at. Workers could participate. Uh, we also heard that from our French speaker that the users contribute half a say and that would become a more needs-based production uh, and also a reduced production. So when other actors have a say that means that you don't just keep growing but every everyone is remunerated for their production. So we talked about use of space and the need to work 
and live at the same place. Today, that is necessary um, in terms of environment and also long term. So this distance between where we live and where we work has to be reduced. For example, I live in Paris, uh, in the Ile de France. Many people have to commute for one and a half hours every day. In the Ile de France, it's not very expensive to take the train. One um, ticket costs 70 th 37 euros 50 cents. Different people have, some people have to commute for a long time, and we must not forget that. There have to be options and the possibility to work where you live. There are some things that are being built that are unnecessary. Freeways, for example, a tunnel between France and Italy in the Alps. We also have to think about the reindustrialization of Europe. That would mean that less goods would have to be transported around. So, uh, transport, uh, passenger transport is a lot, but uh, we also have a lot of freight transport. The Deutsche Bahn or different traffic companies transport a lot of freight. And in Europe, these are the leading rail traffic companies. On a European level, we have to have a plan. We can't just destroy what used to work, for example, railway lines. Despite all that's been announced by different governments, rail, rail lines are still being destroyed. We need policies that we all can benefit from. So the rail sector is something special. It can only be a collective. We have this common structure that we can use. Um, I won't be able to make it in three minutes. There were a few points that I'd like to elaborate on. For, uh, le let's start. So, where's yeah, the air traffic? But at the moment we have rules, we have regulations we have to stick to, we have to regulations to reduce carbon dioxide by a certain amount of tons. And it's not only our sector. That's probably not the answer to your question, but we can't just organize that ourselves. We're in a democracy, that means we have to find a majority, organize something to pull it through, and that needs more time than the numbers show. And I cannot solve the problem. But in general, I think we agree on most points the, on, uh, in terms of the ideal future for all of us. And I think there are different ways to that same future. And we represent the interests, certain interests, and there are certain limits we have to stick to. Between 1919 and 2021, their uh, vehicles have been increased from 47 million to 48.5 million private cars. Every fifth car we used to be an SUV, and now it's every fourth. But we have, uh, we don't have to like that, but we have to recognize it. Even in Berlin, 2019, 
every five minutes there's an S bun or uh, a tube. Even there, uh, private cars have increased the number of them. So as unions, we have to take a look at the needs or, to or the demands of the government towards our industry and how can we fulfill them without losing jobs. And I believe what is clear, uh, at least uh, with personal vehicles, we will not be able to sit out e-mobility. We uh, maybe in because of uh, emission regulations, uh, not only in production but also in R and D. Topic software plays more and more of an important role, but you can't just uh, transform that from one person to the other. So you cannot re-educate a machine engineer to a software engineer. So uh, one thing is education. And we believe we are on the right path, but we need more time. So with 30, 35 years old, I have a certain Uh, liabilities I have to I can't forget so we also ask for a four day work week for the federal government that wasn't fully possible um, the FDP for example uh, and also the question of uh, representation in the company of course we have an interest in what is produced where in terms of law that's not as easy there is one exception Volkswagen but usually it is the company that decides that and where we are organized that's where we can influence these decisions but it's difficult uh, to influence it in favor of the workers. How many new renewable energies do we need for all the power? Uh, the answer is a lot. That is why we want to have fast transformation for towards renewable energies. The change towards e-mobility or uh, in general would mean that we need more power but we need f fewer fossil fuels so that's um, an area where we could save and also the topic of e-mobility i think there are 79 tons of carbon dioxide that have to be um, saved until 2030 but the answer is probably more mobility instead of less and uh, then nine euro ticket also leads to more mobility and i i really like that i think it should be continued but in the traffic sector if we if we want to economize carbon dioxide then we need to change towards e-mobility as fast as possible that's what the studies say um, a lot of carbon dioxide can be saved by changing to e-mobility. That is why e-mobility for personal vehicles, that is clear. Um, that's just how we have to do it. Of course, uh, we can try and avoid more traffic in the future. That's great. And we will achieve our goals even faster. But first, and for the moment, we have to work with what we have, uh, especially connected to carbon dioxide. That is the technical reality we live in today. Um, air traffic, so all the renewables in Germany, we would need them all for air traffic. Uh, that's possible, I don't know. So. We need power or power to liquid and we would import that from other countries, but how that works, that's a different question. Conversion in the machine 
Uh, that is possible on a few a few places, but we're focusing on a concrete shift towards e-mobility. That's what we're focusing on. Uh, avoidance is going to play a role, but right now, for the next few years, we want to shift as fast as possible towards e-mobility so we can reach our goals. I'm sure I haven't answered all the questions, but uh, that's where I'm going to stop. Thank you, Pia. So I'd like to give you the opportunity. Thank you. Okay. I hope you can hear me. My name is Rolf Beile Imoni. I am an urban planner. So I've worked in this city for the last 16 years. I did my best, to be honest, to get the mobility transformation going. Now that I'm retired, I'm also a member of Attack Köln, Cologne, and I am also positioning myself in this traffic transformation. And I can say our cities in Europe and in Germany are perfect for this change. We have always been a city of short distances. Our cities are close and compact. We can have short ways. And you can see it when we look at cars in Germany. In comparison to the US, for example, or Australia, our cars are used for short distances. Cars are used for short distances. It doesn't have such a big influence on mobility for society as a whole. So when we talk about regional trains and regional mobility, not the TGV or the ICE trains in Germany, the big ones, the regional and local transport is bad. And the public transport regionally needs to be improved. That is the one that needs to improve. And that is also the response to cars, to be honest. And dear colleagues, I'm part of this union for 60 years. Your alternative is not an alternative. E-mobility for cars takes away just as much space. And when it comes to the climate question and the CO2 question, e-mobility still sucks and it's not clear. I can see we disagree. We agree to disagree and we'll leave it at that. But this is not the response. And this is not the response to the mobility questions. We need to move away from cars. Of course, e-mobility to a certain extent, sure, granted. But not as a mass vehicle for everyone and every individual. And I have to disagree with you because the structure in Germany, and of course we export our cars, and it's important for German Germany, but I have something to say. Can you wrap it up? One more point. The question of energy and to bring up nuclear power so everyone can have electric cars, then I think you're just kidding, honestly. But that is not an option. We do not want to have the CO2 question solved with nuclear power. Thank you very much. Hello, I am Nicolas from the France, French Post. It's just a short story. 15 years ago, the French Post sold its air cargo for express parcels. And this company was sold because instead they wanted quick lines. We have it in Germany too. There were 25 25 airplanes were meant to be replaced by TGVs and fast trains. Nowadays, we still have planes that do part of the parcels and the CO2 footprint has increased a lot. This was also worsened in the pandemic. Today we see We see 
lobbyists, and we see government. And we see a risk. We as unions have decided to put pressure on the post and on the government as well. There is a law in Europe. I have a question. If the if German postal services actually also uses trains as well. The The post has e mobility as well. We see we try to look at emissions. I'm sorry, it was difficult to interpret. <laughs> we have three or four more speakers and then we will respond. I am speaking German. I am Anne Kretschmer. I work for Stay Grounded. I want to say one thing about mobility and the reduction of mobility. I find it important that we shouldn't say that we need to stop being mobile and stop mobility. We just have to rethink it and shift it. We shouldn't avoid mobility. We we don't want to limit people's opportunities to be mobile and to move around. But my question to the plenary is in a different way. We're at the Summer University of Social Movements. Apart from some of the topics that we're talking about, we can definitely pick a fight. But my question is, what do you see? How do you see social movements involved in this, also in unions? What is our task? In the climate movement, in the climate forum yesterday, we talked about our organizations. And maybe it's not really our focus to chase workers around, but that is maybe more also topic of unions that have to fight for a change. But what I am asking myself, do unions do that? But from your perspective as unions, what is the job of social movements and how can we work together and how can we focus on maybe the same goals and work towards the same direction apart from maybe some negotiations on certain European levels. Not only in Germany having agreements and wage agreements there, but maybe on a bigger scale as well. You have the floor. I will speak French. I am Eric Nemerge von Attack France. I have three things to say. When it comes to air traffic, we have a campaign in Attack Liège to, to stop the development of an airport in Berzier. We will have a protest in September. I invite all of you to join us. Why do we want to boycott and stop that airport? Well, we want to reach our climate goals. One of the challenges that we're facing is that unions like IG Metal has taken up logistics as well and we need to find a base on this. So one of the questions if we want to reconsider the world as it is and on a democratic level, what is the structure of unions? And I've worked in many unions. Is it still up to date? But shouldn't we have to reconsider the structure of that organization in itself? We have many people that are probably have low wages that are not coming from that same union as people that graduated from university. But when it comes back to air traffic, I'm sorry, can attack, maybe agree 
that we would have taxation and kerosene as the fuel on airplanes. We had taxation on on tickets, but if we would have taxation on that fuel, then we would not be taxing the consumers in that initial way, but we would also be hitting rich people. And on a European level, we have an agreement that is not written anywhere that kerosene would be taxed. And regarding trains, it is necessary to stop the competitiveness when it comes to the ICE trains, the TARIS, the TGV, everything. Can we not have a cooperation on an international level that we can find again that we used to have in the past? And I would really like to ask the people in the plenary in 2023 in March we will have a coalition of different activists and activist organizations to have a protest is there an opportunity to simplify means of transport I am Lucas, and I wanted to ask, I see digitalization in the automotive industry as quite worrisome, because what we say is the opportunity to repair and fix cars decreases exponentially. We have systems that work together, and Mercedes actually said for one of his newest cars, that they avoided the fact that normal people can open the hood of their own car. Sure, there are power lines, but honestly, a motor is dangerous too. So as a private person, if I can only have my car fixed at a Mercedes dealership, then I can't fix my car if Mercedes would discontinue this kind of service, which is absolutely not sustainable. Second point, something that really bothers me, I'm curious if anyone deals with that question is why do we have why do we have to keep building new cars? Can we not restructure the cars and pre existing cars are ready? I don't see any car manufacturers that actually do anything in that direction of having existing cars and making them e mobile. Hello. I am Antoine. I'll be speaking French. I am French, I am privileged, and I'm young. You have your head full of your work, and my heart is full. I'm stressed. I'm stressed with the climate question that we talked about. I believe it is important and it, that we will act, and everything that we will do will have to be in union with considering climate change. We need to put our ideals on that level. Mr. Coco, what you said, we have the same ideals for the future, but I want to know what yours are, because what I heard you talked about e-mobility. But what happens afterwards? What's after that? Emmanuel, you spoke about that we need to change the way between work and home. Shouldn't we be acting quicker? We heard a lot about organizations, structures, networks, but transport and mobility touches on our way of life and our lifestyle. So what will we give up of our lifestyle? What are we willing to do? That is the central point and the core of this debate. And the, there's also a question of ideals what is our long-term goal and how can we get these goals closer towards us how can we achieve our goals faster because our future starts tomorrow my last question I came here to see this single one conference on transport and I want to know if the like I study this too but what I want to know is are 
producers ready for this challenge because personally I need to find an alternative and I need to have this perspective and I'm not going to get it from you. Who am I going to get it from? Thank you very much. If there's any more, no more, then I still have one more question for Pierre. Maybe you can say something. What do we have to do as a perspective from workers? What does the management of automotive industries what do we have to what do they have to do so that trust would rise in uh, we have um we have a need for this change and this shift and we can definitely create a lot of jobs too like we said with these different organizations there are a lot of numbers around this topic, but how can we get the trust of the workers to make sure that these jobs will be saved or that there will be other opportunities for them? And so as employees in the automotive industries, how can you also join forces with the climate movement? So, But I would also pose the questions back to the panel so that you can react to the things. I wanted to um, respond to Anna. What can unions and social movements do and what are the expectations on either side? I have the example of TVN. We had young people from Fridays for Future. that participated in that was a huge change. So we had social movements combined with Fridays for Future. The idea was to decrease individual car use and to strengthen public transport. We have different publications about this. There are descriptions of this as a social turn of the climate movement. And in opposition to this, we would have to say that there's a climate turn of the unions. And I want to talk to Pierre. We need to see how society changes. But to me, that's too defensive. And in the end, you follow the automotive industry because our society is still based on the car lobby that still makes sure that we're still reliant on cars. And this calculations that you opened is not sustainable because the question that we dealt with is what kind of space does do these vehicles take up, but what do we have to redo? We keep having to fix roads, we keep having to invest in infrastructure, and that is a lot of money that we would invest. After that, we have to look at resources. We have to look at the metals at use and the resources that we're using. So if we look at e-mobility and all the software coming up, where do they come from? e-mobility and replacing fossil fuel run traffic by e-mobility is not the right path forward to be honest. I want to remind you the IG Metal the as a union and my union as well we had a shared statement with BUND and the NABU which are environmental organizations in Germany we need to have this change in mobility it has to be sustainable it needs to be done in an ecological way if I look at our newspaper from these metal unions then I just see these reports of the successes of these electric vehicles but that just doesn't go together thank you very much I have three points to mention. We talked about the local level, the regional level, the aspect of reducing mobility, and the question of what social movements should do.
For me, avoiding mobility and the needs of an individual as diverse as they are, there are basic needs that we can all agree on and that this will boil down to, and we'll talk about this right now too. What I mentioned in my opening statement, lack of air pollution and decreasing stress is something that we can all agree on. So when we talk about avoiding mobility, then we can also see there's some enforced mobility by having to drive to work or getting to work. And no more structures when it comes to shops, for example. And we have to keep driving and there's always this pressure and this stress. And we are, we're out of time, basically. We have no time. So I agree that in a way we have to decrease mobility to a certain extent. That doesn't mean we shouldn't be traveling. That doesn't mean that we sh should not travel anymore. But this overdone and overexerted travel and mobility is not meant. We talked about traffic and infrastructure on a local level. And we believe that we should also point out the demands and the needs. And we need to stop overly overdoing this mobility we should be walking more use your bike more use public transport more and i think that changes so much already one example is changing cities it's a very successful movement because we can identify similar needs and we can have approaches from citizens and from people already and we can have this visibility and I see it that same way for social movements. And I love the term social turn and climate turn that unions are using as well. We need to identify needs and we need to identify opportunities for us as well and to make these claims. Thank you very much. to also respond to some of the questions on the perspective as unions. We have tried to use the means of our unions. We would go on strike for our working conditions, for our income, for our work and jobs and themselves, but also for the structures in our companies and the structures when it comes to railway. The last strike was in 2018. We were going on about the structure of the railway in France. It was French. But like I said, since 2011, there are European guidelines about railway. Since then, we've had protests on a European level as well. We had European strikes of European railway workers. This was about building of railway. Railway workers wanted to cooperate and wanted to have a shared railway. They didn't want competition between these different companies. The richest countries exploit poor countries. France, for example, Spain and Italy, Germany does the same, and we cannot accept it simply as a given. The French government actually put half of a network at risk and threatened it, and they said half of it would have to be shut down. And this is not dealing with TGVs, but it was the local regional transport, public transport, transport that we talked about and we're in this capitalistic logic we have losses that are put out to the public while the um, profits will always remain private we need to look out for our needs France for example 
in France we see that in 25 years we will have more people working in the railway industry but rather in the production of parts with bad income and bad working conditions and like this they cannot live properly these are people that have to drive far to get to work because they can't afford to live close to where they're working strikes can be tools and workers can exert power and we can achieve more awareness of what the situation is like for people in the railway sector. In Belgium we know that there are issues around that. We have a hilly area and we have a relatively flat area and that's about the half of the country and the the possibility to actually build to build railways is different and the hilly areas do not, are not meant to have tracks because it's more difficult and that is the reality in Europe my colleagues are sometimes 18 or 19 years old and we need to make sure that they understand what we're fighting for and what this is about we need to explain how these strikes work and how industrial action can work how you can save a monthly wage so that you can mobilize in the next month and out of this is what we're trying to do every single day we talk to workers Um, one comment to the gentleman that is working in city planning. Battery run. Battery run cars are better when it comes to the CO2 neutrality when we have renewable energy sources. So. so social movements. The last big manifestation I was part of, together with other uh, Munich, I think that was with uh, 500,000 participants, that was in 2015 in Berlin. And all the social movements came together. It was about topics of uh, health protection, um, climate protection, and that works. If it's about redistribution, we are asking for uh, property taxes. That's also no question. Uh, economy, democracy, what is produced where, when. I also think we all agree that we need to have um, more representation by society than companies. I think there are enough points uh, of social movements regionally um, or internationally even, where we cross points. So uh, even I, from a, unions, from a union, many social movements are structured similarly, but we have to approach each other. Um, that shouldn't be difficult. There are so many topics that we have in common. There are couples where we do not agree, for example, uh, how to get from now to tomorrow and some a bit more concrete topics, of course, but uh, that should not stop us from working together uh, with the topics on the topics where we agree. For example, kerosene tax. Of course, uh, why not? Mm, no questions asked. Uh, one point surprised me a bit. Mercedes, uh, I think it's about battery e-cars, uh, where you cannot open the booth at the hood anymore. Uh, I do not have such a car, I don't know, but if that's really true, we have to uh, take that into account. I don't believe that these cars can only be repaired with Mercedes in the future. Um, we will need 
independent mechanics to have access to this technology as well. Um, why we don't just rebuild old cars uh, into e-cars? Uh, apparently, the market isn't big enough for the producers uh, that that would be worth it for them. Final question. What does the management have to do? How do they have to act so that we believe that they make the right decisions? Well, the management makes decisions so that they earn more money. So that means, uh, and they do that uh, within the limits of legal regulations. So I don't have a huge amount of trust into management. I trust them uh, when there is true parity in a council. But but so we need true participation and first and foremost uh, for employers. But what's against that? I'm supposed to speak a bit more slowly. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't direct you earlier signals if there were any. Speak more slowly. So I will summarize. There are enough touch points within social movements and we should keep working on those. And um, Unions are a great partner, just as a signal. I do not trust the management, but I have trust in us reach, uh, achieving our goals in a democratic way. But I will not rely on employers for that. I rely on society. Full stop. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for the participation. Uh, just to pick up on the point Pierre made, um, the employers will not do much. They will mostly be concerned with their shareholder value. Um, we also talked about regulations. We need real participation because the workers also have children and they have a private life as well so they also they they suffer from air pollutions maybe they would rather take the bus if there was one so there are touch points that's what i'm taking home with me from this discussion i also learned that there is a big need for a good public transport network Especially in regional traffic. I'm not necessarily talking about um, intercity trains. They're important as well. But what we need is an improved regional network. How do we get there? We tried to talk about strategic discussions. We also saw with PS. Uh, contribution that there that we're headed towards a big crisis in terms of um, living costs and now we ask for a different structure and a solidari solidaric uh, structure change so this will make the discussion more difficult uh, I'd like to talk for two minutes now Maybe we can uh, talk to each other afterwards. So what do we have to do now? Personally, I think we have to strengthen alternatives. We have to create jobs. We have to strengthen mobility industry. We have to prolong the nine euro ticket. That's why we have the action on the 27th of August. So there is 
a lot we can do to improve. We also have to talk about city planning, about forest mobility, and we have to avoid forest mobility. So in the end, it's about more democracy in companies, but also in regions, also what Manuel Emmanuel talked about. Uh, also uh, for rail traffic. Thank you all for this great discussion. I hope that it was interesting to you, that you learned something. Personally, I did. I'm looking forward to next our next discussion.